Nowadays, it's cool to hate on all the big tech companies. Apple, overpriced. Google, evil. Facebook, lizard man. Amazon, bald man. And Netflix, well, according to the media, they're already dead despite having over 200 million remaining subscribers. Some of the criticism that these companies receive is perfectly valid. They do indeed collect user data, work to keep us addicted to mind-numbing content, and some of them have a horrendous workplace. But while people like to complain about these attributes, it's not like anyone is switching away from these companies, right? I mean, in terms of revenue, all of these companies are at all-time highs or near all-time high levels. And in terms of market cap, even with the stock market crash and tons of layoffs, all of these companies are still worth hundreds of billions, if not trillions. But while these companies are still performing extraordinarily well, there seems to be a new movement within the tech industry that's also thriving, the anti-big tech tech industry. Most of these companies don't create anything groundbreaking or revolutionary. They're usually just rudimentary photo sharing, emailing, or messaging services. But that's okay, because their value proposition lies in what they don't do. DuckDuckGo doesn't collect your browsing data. Signal doesn't spy on your personal conversations. And Be Real doesn't serve you a constant stream of thirst traps and Instagram thoughts. Given the general distaste for big tech products, a large number of people have embraced these new platforms. DuckDuckGo has 80 million users, Signal has 40 million users, and Be Real has 47 million users. For a brief period of time, Be Real was even the most downloaded app on the Apple App Store. At this rate, these services can surely be a viable alternative to big tech, right? Or at least, they should get big tech to change some of their own policies and tendencies. But this is where the bad news comes in. Just as fast as these apps rose in popularity, they're also crashing in popularity. Be Real, for example, was able to reach an impressive 53 million installs, but only a mere 9% of users actually use the app on a regular basis. A similar story can be seen with Signal as well. While their total user count keeps soaring, their daily active users was actually down 60% by the end of 2021. This is in stark contrast to big tech companies. Though people apparently cannot stand their practices, their user bases are stronger than ever. Google and Facebook literally have monthly active user counts in the billions, and it's only expected to go up. So here's why anti-big tech companies are already failing. People ditching these anti-big tech apps may seem like a new trend, but their eventual demise can actually be traced back to the roots of their success. You see, most of these apps don't grow in a very natural manner, and it's not like they grow from 1 to 2 to 5 to 10 million users. Rather, it's more like they have 5,000 users one month, and then 10 million the next month, then back to 1 million a year after. In other words, much of their popularity is due to some sort of short-lived external surge. Take Signal for instance. Signal has actually been out for nearly 10 years, having been launched in July of 2014. But most of you probably didn't hear about Signal up until 2021, and that's no coincidence. Much of Signal's popularity can be attributed to a single tweet from Elon Musk. Use Signal. The original tweet itself didn't go viral, it only garnered a few hundred thousand likes. But it did get the attention of the media, social media influencers, and eventually everyday people. And if you're not convinced that this tweet had much of an impact, just take a look at Signal's monthly downloads. As you can see, throughout 2020, Signal was chilling at a few million downloads per month. Suddenly, in the first quarter of 2021 though, when Elon made his tweet, it exploded to 80 million downloads. But within just one more quarter, Signal's downloads went back to a slightly higher baseline. And by the end of the year, the majority of the people who had joined in on this sudden surge had already left. A similar story can be seen with Be Real as well. Most of us associate Be Real with 2022, but the app actually launched at the start of 2020. It wasn't until a brilliant marketing effort in 2022, however, that it actually blew up. You see, Signal figured that most of their potential user base was young adults. And what's the easiest way to get to these people? Well, the answer is college campuses. In early 2022, Be Real started paying college students to promote the app by writing about it in the school newspaper, hosting Be Real parties, and sponsoring food. 
As the app gained popularity amongst college campuses, the mainstream media started picking up on it and it really just snowballed from there. But at the end of the day, the app's entire user base could be traced back to one successful marketing campaign. And as that marketing campaign lost team, so did the app. The same thing could be said about Clubhouse as well. In early 2021, when big name players like Elon Musk jumped on, the platform went absolutely wild. But within just one year, I mean, just look at the graph. The reality is that while people love to complain about big tech all day, it's not until an external factor pushes them that they actually try something new, whether that be an Elon Musk tweet or a marketing campaign. But while such events are great at creating buzz around the service, it doesn't actually build a loyal user base. People aren't using Be Real or Clubhouse for the messaging functionality or the chatting functionality or the social media aspect. Really, they don't use it for any specific purpose other than some celebrity is using it or everyone around me is using it. In other words, for most users, these apps lack any real substance and are usually built upon a pretty rocky foundation. So as soon as that external factor starts to fade, so does the app. Most of these apps don't survive the virality bust, but even if they do, that's just the first step. Now, these apps have to live up to the promise of being better than big tech offerings. After all, for many of them, that's the entire pitch. Be Real is not another social media network. Robinhood is investing for all, and Signal is the private WhatsApp, though ironically, it was actually created by one of WhatsApp's founders. The problem though is that it's virtually impossible to stick to such virtuosic visions. I mean, think about this. At one point in time, Facebook and Google themselves were the anti-big tech players. When Google launched, Yahoo, Microsoft, and AOL dominated the search and browser scenes. And by the time Facebook launched, Friendster and MySpace were ginormous. Also, let's not forget, Google's entire slogan was, don't be evil. But both of these companies eventually turned to the quote-unquote dark side. Why? Well, I can assure you that it's not because they want to. Do you really think that Mark Zuckerberg wants a 22% favorability rating or that Google wants to be known for invasive data collection? Of course not. The reason that these companies turn to such means is because that is literally the only way to do it for free. The only viable alternative is to charge end users. But if you want to compete against free offerings from big names, you also have to offer your services for free. And that's where the problem arises. As an anti-big tech company, not only do you have to offer your services for free to remain competitive, but you have to do it while not engaging in any of the lucrative revenue avenues that the big tech companies engage in. This may work out fine for the first few years when you have momentum and a bunch of venture capital. But eventually, you reach a crossroads at which point you realize that you have a fundamental problem. All of those big tech practices that your app has disowned have led it to a dead end. Take Be Real for instance. The idea of the app is that users share a simple photo of themselves every day and that they don't spend hours endlessly scrolling through other people's photos. But bro, how the hell are you going to make money when you're actively not just encouraging but enabling your users to use the app for as little time as possible and not collecting any data on them? Let's just say that most of these apps have a harsh reality check when VC money dries up and they have to continue paying for hundreds of servers and thousands of engineers. At this point, they only have two options, turn to the dark side and save the company or continue pursuing their idealistic fantasy and kill the company. For obvious reasons, almost all founders and leaders choose option one and before they know it, they've become the villain that they sought to eliminate. Virtually no company is able to survive the virality bust and the funding crunch. But hypothetically, let's say some anti-big tech company manages to do this. The reality is that they're still screwed because if the virality nor the funding took down the company, the users will because the service is fundamentally flawed as it opposes human psychology. Here's the thing, while it's easy to blame big tech companies for everything that's wrong with their platforms, the truth is that much of what's wrong with their platforms is us. Do you hate that your Instagram and TikTok feeds are always filled with thirst traps or that your YouTube feed is filled with clickbait titles that the economy is ending as we know it? Newsflash, this is not because of big tech companies. These companies are not committed to showing you any one thing. The only thing that they're committed to is keeping you on the platform. 
So the only reason your feed is filled with thoughts is because that's what you like to see. If you truly liked seeing documentaries about kale and video essays about steel fabrication, that's what these platforms would show you. Trust me, these social media platforms have it down to a science, and the almighty algorithm is just audience psychology. But it turns out that you don't like that. You don't want to see authentic photos of your friends. You want to see the highlight reel because that's what gives you something to long for, something to fantasize about. While this is terrible for your mental health, it's also the most addictive and most engaging. So by virtue, this also means that an app that circulates authentic photos is non-addictive and non-engaging. And though you may know that this is better for your mental health, most people don't end up sticking with this option. It's the same reason that most people gain back weight that they lose from a diet and why gyms are packed in January. While such apps have a cool promise like improving your mental health, the reality is that they're essentially a social media diet, and sooner or later, most people stop dieting. At the end of the day, the monumental fall of these anti-big tech companies isn't surprising. These companies are trying to break the laws of physics by trying to do it all. They want to offer the best parts of Google and Facebook without paying the price, and that's simply impossible because nothing comes for free. If users aren't paying with money, they have to pay with their attention by watching ads and by sacrificing their privacy. It's that simple. That's how businesses work. They offer a service or product for a price. And if customers aren't paying, the business is simply not viable. But even if you somehow figured out the business side of things, you'll be blocked by yet another law of physics. Attention cannot be created or destroyed. There's a limited amount of attention out there, and people like spending it on things that they know they shouldn't be spending it on. I mean, just think about it. The biggest restaurant in the world isn't a salad chain, it's a burger joint. The same thing applies for tech. The biggest tech companies will always be the ones that feed into your negative tendencies as opposed to the ones that try to oppose them. And that's why these anti-big tech companies are already failing. Would you ever attempt a big tech detox? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you would like to see more tech-oriented business videos. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.